Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Tom died with Christ and rose with him to new life May he now share with him eternal glory. Tom entered the church through the waters of baptism. And in that baptism, he was clothed with a white garment as he put on the purity of Christ. Today, as he enters the church for the final time, we again clothe his body with the white garment as a sign of that purity, of that promise of everlasting life. baptism, Tom received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. God of endless ages, from one generation to the next, you have been our refuge and our strength. Before the mountains were born, or the earth came to be, you are God. Have mercy now on your servant Tom, whose long life was spent in your service. Give him a place in your kingdom where hope is firm for all who love and rest is sure for all who serve. Through Christ our Lord. Now let us be seated as we listen to the word of God proclaimed through scripture.
a reading from the book of Job. Job answered Bildad, the Shuite, and said, Oh, would that my words were written down, would that they were inscribed in a record, that with an iron chisel and with lead they were cut in the rock forever. But as for me, I know that my vindicator lives and that he will at last stand forth upon the dust, whom I myself shall see, my own eyes, not another's, shall behold him. And from my flesh, I shall see God. My inmost being is consumed with longing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also us with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, but as to what, what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I've known Tom all of my life. I grew up right next door to him. And uh, the old Kennedy kids I, most of you probably babysat for me at one point or another when I was uh, little. And, but Tom and Catherine, they, and, and that's how I knew them as Tom and Catherine. I know Katie and, uh, Katie and Tommy, maybe what you call them, but I, I always knew them as Tom and Catherine. They, they were always there. They were always there for us. They were always there for, um, for my, my brothers and my sister. And, um, you know, I love them as though they were my own aunt and uncle. And it, it's an honor for me to be able to celebrate this funeral for Tom. Tom was a man of great faith. He was a man who's, uh, who practiced his faith. He lived his faith in, in the way he lived his life. We gather here today as um, to celebrate Tom, to celebrate his life to celebrate the life that he lived. As we gather here, we, we also mourn. We mourn for his passing. We mourn for the loss that we suffer in uh, no longer having him in our lives. And it's right for us to be sad. It's right for us to mourn when we lose someone who is close to us. As I said, Tom, um, he, was, he didn't have any children of his own, but uh, between the nieces and nephews and grandnieces and nephews and, uh, of course, uh, uh, the kids at Bishop Borges. He had certainly had a family. He certainly had a family. And 
uh, we as a family, we gather here to, to honor and, uh, I said, to, to celebrate that life that he has, the life that, that has not passed. His life has not passed. Even though we see him before us, we see him before us, he lies before us, and we, uh, we look at the life that has passed before him, his life is not over. At the beginning of Mass, I sprinkled him with the holy water as a, sign, as a symbol of his baptism. And I spread, we spread that garment as a sign of his baptism. And that, in that baptism, Tom became a child of God, a son of God. And in that baptism, Tom was given the promise of eternal life. That promise is what brings us together. That promise brings us together to celebrate. And we can truly celebrate, even though we mourn his passing, we celebrate that as a child of God, his life goes on. And today, we take hope in the words from our Eucharistic prayer. For your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. For Tom, life has certainly changed. For us, life has changed but it has not ended. It has not ended for us, it has not ended for Tom. Tom has gone on to that dwelling place promised to him by Jesus Christ. That dwelling place that is prepared for him and for us. Jesus Christ, we're in the season right now of Lent. We're preparing for Good Friday. The, the end of the season of Lent ends with that sacrifice that Christ offered for us. That sacrifice is a testament of God's love for us. The love that God has for all of us. The love that God had for Tom. God had Tom in mind at the beginning of, the beginning of time. Tom, God had Tom in mind. God desired that Tom be with him for all eternity. And Jesus Christ came so that that desire of God would be fulfilled. He gave us that promise of eternal life. As we gather to celebrate, as we gather to mourn, let us also pray. Now Tom and Catherine, they, they were good at praying. They, they were good at, at praying. And, and I know, and I, I, I know how much they prayed because they were always there uh, for uh, all of the, the special events in life. Tom, uh, you know, he was, uh, I remember them coming to First Communions. I remember them coming to Confirmation. He was my Confirmation sponsor. I remember them uh, being there and witnessing to us what it meant to be a Christian. He, he didn't just talk about his faith. He lived his faith. He lived his faith in all that he did. And so we pray. We pray not just for Tom. We pray for ourselves as well. We pray that we will be comforted, that we will be comforted in the knowledge that Tom is now up there, up there praying for us. He's up there around the altar of the Lamb at the eternal Mass, the Mass that goes on forever. He was the, the sacristan at St. Albert the Great, I'm sure probably down in Florida too. Um, helped to set up church. He helped to set things up for Mass, for that celebration that we have at this altar. Because he knew, he knew the importance of what Christ had given us, the sacrifice that Christ gave for us. Today, should we continue our memories of Tom and you know, I spent some time talking with Eileen a couple days ago, and she shared with me some stories, a lot that I, I didn't, didn't know about Tom. Um, you know, the, his interaction with the family, and certainly in his later years, uh, as I was, uh, for many years, I was out at sea, so I didn't see him very much, and then seminary, and then assigned to parishes. I didn't see him very much in his later years, although I did get to see him a few times when he would come. Uh, Bev would bring him to church here uh, sometimes on Sundays when he was, uh, when he was home. But uh, she shared some stories about him. And I always tell people that those stories that you have, continue to share those stories. You each have your own story about Tom. And, you know, I, I just, I picture in my mind as I, as I hear that, that smile that he had on his face and that, that kind of that glint in his eye. Uh, he had that glint in his eye. Um, Share those stories, because as you share them, 
even though your stories overlap with one another, you each have your own perspective on his life. And as you share, you come to know him. You get to know him a little bit better. You get to love him a little bit more. Today, as I said, Tom has gone before us. He's up now. He's gone to his eternal reward promised by Christ. And Christ has welcomed him into that paradise. And he's up there now reunited with Katie. And together they are praying for us. I'm sure they've got the rosaries out praying for us before God himself. Praying for the day when we will be reunited with them. So, yes, it's, it's right for us to mourn at the loss of a loved one, but we celebrate. We celebrate for what he has gained, what we have gained now that we have another saint in heaven praying for us. Amen. Now, let us stand and let us continue our prayers for Tom. And I would invite Eileen to come forward as we offer our prayers of the faithful. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ Jesus, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Tom, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of Tom, that we may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly and their caregivers, that the Holy Spirit will overshadow them with comfort and peace in their trials, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our teachers and students, that they use their minds and bodies and hearts in union with the Holy Spirit to the best of their abilities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here and watching online to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated as we prepare our altar for our Eucharistic sacrifice.
pray, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Tom, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never, ce and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Tom, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes for seeing you, our God, as you are. We shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As we come forward for communion, we're just going to come form a single line coming up the center aisle. 
keeping in mind our six foot social distance between those who do not live under the same roof, those who are not together. And uh, when you get to the uh, six foot from me, you're the first one, the next one in line, just wait until I hold the host up and say the body of Christ. At that point, you respond, amen. Step forward, removing your mask, and place your hand out to receive the host, and then pick it up, place it in your mouth. Once you've received the Eucharist, I would encourage you to then come forward and come up to, to the coffin, come up to Tom, and just lay your hand on the coffin and just say a brief prayer for Tom before returning to your seat by the side aisle. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. may be seated. Although we cannot all gather together today to receive the Eucharist, we are encouraged to receive Christ into our hearts spiritually. So together, let us make our act of spiritual communion. My the Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to the receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as the if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. The Never body permit me to be separated from you. Amen the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Tom may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Now, I would like to invite Porg to come forward to say a few words about Tom. You may be seated.
before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Tom. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness, strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. So now we come to our final song of farewell, that final prayer that we offer. And as we sing the song of farewell, our prayers rise up to heaven as the smoke from the incense also rises to heaven with our prayers, the incense that we use to bless his body. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Tom in this sure and certain hope that together with all who have died with Christ, you will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us. Listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
wanted to make an announcement, but oh. I'll come back up. Right. 